I don't normally review RC cars, but this one has a trick up its sleeve. The Edipon RC Stunt Car is a toy-grade truck-car hybrid with a futuristic style and a very interesting mechanical design that I'd never seen before now. It can transform from rock climber to speed racer at the touch of a button. It comes with a small controller that feels great in the hand, but I don't love the controls because they're binary, meaning they're either on or off. There's no proportional control here. It's either full speed or no speed. The same goes for the steering. It's either full right, full left, or nothing. The button on the left makes it transform, and the button on the right is some kind of demonstration mode, where the car basically just goes nuts and starts driving around itself like an emotionally unstable savage. This will wreck your living room, and it will knock over your mum's floral vase, so don't press it. The controller is powered by two AA batteries, not supplied, and the car runs on a single 18650 lithium cell. They do supply two of these batteries, but it's a pity they're only single cell because 3.7 volts doesn't give this car quite as much power as it really needs to shine. But then for the price, I suppose we can't complain. If there was more space in the battery compartment, I'd probably stick a 2S LiPo in there and see how it performs. The redeeming factor about this car is this unique transforming mechanism. And the designers have utilized that same mechanism for steering, which is a pretty novel approach. There's no steering servo or anything traditional like that. Instead, the car's body tilts from one side to the other, pulling the wheels on one side closer together and making it steer in that direction. It's less accurate than a traditional steering servo setup, but it's quite interesting nonetheless. The transform feature is the coolest thing about this car, and it's really the main selling point. If we watch it transform in slow motion, we see this ball and socket configuration that rotates around a semicircle to bring the body up and shorten the wheelbase, or lower it back down and stretch it out. So how does it drive? In racer mode, it's not exactly what I'd call fast, but it gets around at an okay pace. Off-road it tries its best, but it does get bogged down a bit on this kind of terrain. That is until you switch it to crawler mode and it does get bogged down a bit on this kind of terrain. But to be fair, it does handle it much better, and you've got to respect it for trying. With the unique method of steering and with not having proportional control, it can be hard to drive in a straight line sometimes, most of the time, all the time, but it's actually kind of fun. There's a wildness to how it handles that makes me genuinely laugh. And I sort of challenge myself to see if I can get it to go where I want it to go. And I feel sorry for it, you know? It doesn't have much in life, but it's trying its best. You've got to respect that. As a crawler, it presents some challenges. With the accelerator being either on or off, there's no way to drive slowly or carefully. And with the steering being more wild than Charlie Sheen riding a blind pterodactyl while snapchatting with Jennifer Lawrence, getting it to go where you want it to go is bundles of fun. Bundles. I like to believe that the limited controls are by design and not flaws, and that Eddie Pond just wanted us to have a challenging but rewarding experience. And it is challenging and rewarding, mostly challenging, if only it had a two cell battery and proportional controls, I feel it would have so much more of a fulfilling life. Sometimes when I see it struggle like this, it kind of breaks my heart. I want to help it, but I know that sometimes we all just have to find our own way in this world. Don't give up, Eddie Pond. Never give up. Still, as small and as underpowered and as flawed as it is, I've had fun with Eddie Pond. It's made me laugh, it's made me smile, it's made me swear, and it's taught me a lot of valuable life lessons. Like, when traversing through the world gets difficult, when the terrain of life becomes hard to navigate, you just keep on going. When you feel small and not strong enough to carry on, you just keep on going. If your life gets completely flipped upside down, you just flip yourself back over and you keep on going. When you find yourself at a dead end, 
When you come face to face with the brick wall of destiny, you just keep on going. And even when you fall down, and you will fall down, you pick yourself back up and you keep on going. When you're all alone and conditions are harsh and hostile, and it seems like no one could survive out there in the frigid, lifeless landscape, you just keep on going. And for that, I will always be grateful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.